And that's why the vaxxers, the anti-vaxxers employ security. You're listening to Skeptoid Shorts. I'm Brian Dunning from Skeptoid.com. Yay! <laughs> I milk that for all it's worth. It's all I've got in life. Just humor me. Martin Gardner's Signs of a Crank. When recreational mathematician Martin Gardner died earlier this year, he left us a huge number of books. One of these is called Fads and Fallacies in the Name of Science. In his first chapter, Gardner went into some depth on characterizing cranks. Cranks are folks whom I encounter quite frequently in my work on Skeptoid, not only from the side promoting pseudoscience, but also from the side of skeptics. I find that a few skeptics are little different methodologically from the pseudoscientists they so fervently argue against, so I believe it's of great value to everyone to familiarize himself with Gardner's list. Now, Gardner didn't really put his points into the form of a list, so I'm taking some liberties here and rearranging them into bullet points. Here are the things you need to make sure you're not doing. First, cranks tend to work in isolation from their colleagues. This is conducive to drifting far afield. If you want to stay abreast of the latest developments, you usually want to be part of the community. If you're not, you proceed unchecked and you lack the checks and balances and corrections of peer review. Isolation is rarely or never the best way to ensure that your work is on track. Cranks tend to be paranoid. They worry that their important discoveries are being spied upon, that evil forces are out to destroy their reputations, that colleagues are conspiring to suppress their discoveries. Cranks tend to consider themselves geniuses. Cranks tend to learn early on that their work is pretty unique, and for some reason they often fail to consider the possibility that this uniqueness is for any reason other than its utter brilliance. I'm the only one smart enough to see this is a pretty clear red flag. Cranks tend to regard their colleagues and critics as stupid. People of mediocre ability are often unable to perceive their own mediocrity and unable to comprehend that others may be smarter or more capable than they. Cranks tend to believe there's a conspiracy against them. Why will nobody publish their paper or invite them to speak at conferences? Is it because their work is poor? No. It must be a conspiracy to protect the status quo and to suppress innovation. Cranks tend to criticize the work of big names in science. Einstein is usually the favorite. Cranks probably tend to go after big names because their own limited experience makes them more familiar with the big names than with the actual science being done in the field. Cranks tend to invent their own terminology, sometimes their own sciences and tend to write in their own overcomplicated jargon. Beware of any scientist that invents his own name for a new science. Obviously, all new scientists, sciences do originally need to be named, but the number of crank theories with made-up names is much, much larger. And beware of any article that is written with such jargon in an overcomplicated way that makes no sense. So really, folks, keep an eye on yourself. Gardner's list is a good one. Do you ever feel yourself traveling down one of these roads? Don't let it happen. Every crank out there started out as a little bit of a crank, and then a little more of a crank, and eventually becomes a full-blown crank, if unchecked. Identifying with the skeptic community, quote unquote, in no way makes you immune. This has been a Skeptoid Short. I'm Brian Dunning from Skeptoid.com. Yeah.